in the service of the SPC, and this is the, the SPC, SPC News. I am Haji Balaba. And I'm Yusuf Abu Sawood. Donald Trump leaves Hanoi summit with Kim Jong un early and empty handed. Two days after predicting a very tremendous summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong un, US President Donald Trump left Hanoi early and empty handed. The curtailed summit, which concluded two hours early without a joint signing ceremony, was an astonishing outcome to the highly anticipated meeting between the two leaders. According to the U.S. president, who delivered a solo press conference following the breakdown of talks, the agreement faltered because North Korea wanted all sanctions lifted in exchange for closing just one nuclear facility. As Washington awoke to the news on Thursday morning, the overriding response in some quarters was one of relief. Many had feared that Trump was prepared to sign up to any deal in order to claim a diplomatic victory. In the days leading up to the summit, the president seemed to have lowered the bar in terms of what the U.S. was prepared to accept from North Korea, stressing that there was no rush to deliver denuclearization. Duterte threatens to shut down PLDT over always busy underground hotline. President Rodrigo Duterte has threatened to shut down PLDT Incorporated if the telecommunication giant won't set up more trunk lines to accommodate calls to a citizen's complaint line for reporting corrupt government workers. The Civil Service Commission, through the Public Assistance and Information Office, manages Hotline 8888 in support of Duterte's order to establish a 24-hour national citizen's complaint hotline where the public can report corruption and inefficiency in government. I'm here at the SPC campus and we will be interviewing some students who use SPLDT Wi-Fi connection at their home. It says that they still have any complaints about Network connections. Excuse me, can I interview? Yes. Do you have PLDT Wi Fi at home? Yes, we have it at home. Does their network connection improve ever since the complaints issues? No, sir. I still have complaints about the network. It's still slow. And it's final away. Fast internet connection is really needed for my projects. Though the PLDT Incorporation promised to improve their services, we can still hear complaints just like this one. Is this a farewell to PLDT Incorporation already? This is Ronnie Pajaro reporting from his PC campus. Back to you, Haji. Dead man floating at sea off Magabalan. Let's hear it from Cynthia Byron. Cynthia? A news published by the Sunstar Kagendo Oro City said that an unidentified man was found floating at sea around 25 meters away from the shore in Accretion Makabalan, Kagendo Oro City, early Wednesday, February 27. Police said fishermen from Barangay Bonbon, this city, saw the victim around 6.20 a.m. and dragged him towards the shore and reported the incident to the authorities. Initial investigation showed the victim was on his mid-twenties and no signs of injuries on his body were found. Senior Inspector Stefan Benvien Latar Police Station 5 Chief said a certain Jovi Domingo resident in the area and formerly who worked at a KTV bar in Divisory area reportedly knew and identified the victim as Kim. Latara said Kim was a parking boy and known to be a troublemaker, especially when he gets drunk, based on Domingo's accounts. Investigators raised the possibilities that the victim may have been drowned, but he said that they would recommend the body for autopsy to determine the real cause of death. Since the person named Jovi is not around here anymore, we can have an interview with her. Excuse me, ma'am. What can you say about this incident? It's really frightening that things like this happen. Safety is our first priority. So, so seeing incident like this. It's quite scary. Thank you, ma'am. That's all happening here 
in equation makabalan. This is Cynthia Byron reporting. Back to you, Yosef. Gilas Filipinos players will be coming back home. Mira Mosquera will give you the report. Mira? It was a festive homecoming for Gilas Filipinas on Monday evening at the Nina Aquino International Airport. They were welcomed by the cheering fans also took the opportunity to take the photos with the player. Gilas Filipinas has qualified for 2019 FIBA World Cup after beating Kazakhstan in Astana on Sunday to finish its campaign with a 7-5 record for fourth place in group. The Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas said they were working hard to have NBA star Jordan Clarkson declared eligible for this year FIBA World Cup as they celebrated the Philippines against all odds qualification on Monday. FIBA also streak each team to one naturalized player, meaning the Philippines would have to choose between Cleveland Cavaliers point guard and Blatch, who acquired Filipino nationality by naturalization. Now, let's hear it from the fans of Gilas Filipinas players. Marian? along the way. That's what makes us Filipino well known across the world because we fight against all odds. Thank you sir. This is Mariana Victoria back to studio. Catriona Gray, the queen, is coming home. Kate Nakila will give you the report. Kate? Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray's grand homecoming parade. People of different ages were out on the streets braving the scorching heat just to get a glimpse of Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray. Some raised their placards with messages on them, while others raised their phones to capture the, the moment. The 25-year-old Filipino-Australian beauty waved back holding a small Philippine flag. Here are some clips from the parade. area formerly Bati was estimated at 1,380 kilometers east of Papari, Cagayan. Central Visayas and Western Valley was partly cloudy skies and isolated light rains. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will be partly cloudy skies. This is Flor Misal reporting. Back to you, Yusef. Trailing the hottest news. In the service of the SPCNs, this is the SPC News. I am Haji Balaba. And I'm Yusuf Abusabu. Signing off. off.